Hi, welcome back to OMG The Cloud. Today we are talking about VPNs. Now, uh, before we talked about site-to-site -site VPNs, IPsec tunnels. Uh, there's other types of VPNs like a client to firewall VPN. That would be like if you're working out of a coffee shop or a hotel or something like that and you want to just VPN back home. This is a little different. This is a privacy VPN. So this is something like if you want to be able to watch uh, television in a different region or country than, than you're located or if you just want to be able to browse privately, access the internet without uh, revealing what your public IP address is, this is a good way to do it. There's lots of providers out there and I'm not gonna recommend any particular provider. That's not really what this is about, but there's plenty of them out there that will work quite nicely directly on your PFSense firewall. So traditionally they would have like a client and you would install that on your Windows or your Mac or Linux machine and you would connect that VPN connection on demand. There's also times when you might wanna just secure your entire network or an entire segment of your network and route all of that traffic through a VPN so that it appears to come out at a different endpoint somewhere else in the world. So that's what we're gonna focus on today. I'm not gonna go through the exact configuration points for any one VPN provider, like I said. I don't wanna give information that's out of date. These, these uh, names and things like that can change over time for sure and port numbers and whatnot. Um, all the providers definitely give a really good set of instructions on how to, to do this configuration. So you really don't need, need me to, to duplicate that. It's, it's something you can pull up on that provider's website. They'll give you like screenshot by screenshot, here's how you do this on PFSense. Like it's, it's not obscure. But once you get it up there, you're kind of on your own, right? They're not gonna tell you how to like do the traffic routing, do the firewall rules and do a separate VLAN. They're not gonna show you how to do any of that. So that's where we pick up. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna assume that you already have your VPN plugged in here, and you've got that working and that it shows that it's connected when you go into your PFSense. From there, what we're gonna do, it's gonna be similar to a few different things we've done in PFSense already. We're gonna create another VLAN, and we're gonna dedicate all the traffic in that VLAN. All of that is gonna route through this connection. So this is gonna provide a couple advantages over just setting this up and you know maybe running a specific IP address or specific port numbers down that VPN tunnel. It does a couple things. Number one, it's gonna prevent what's called DNS leak. So this would be where uh, you might do a DNS query and it might come out your WAN and do a lookup that way that might expose some identifying information from you. Secondarily, this also ensures that if your VPN ever went down, it's not going to just fail over and start sending traffic out over your ISP, exposing your public IP address. Since it's in its own VLAN, and we're gonna configure this so the gateway is the VPN, if that VPN goes down, all traffic stops for that VLAN. And that's really what you want if you're using this for privacy. To that end, let's get started. We'll go over to interfaces, assignments, and VLANs, and this should look familiar. We're gonna go ahead and add in an additional VLAN. Now you can tag this whatever you want. For me, I went ahead and built one out and I called it 999 for my VLAN tag. So we'll just show you what this looks like. Uh, this is on my LAN interface, VLAN tag 999, and I give it a description. That's all there is to it. Secondly, once that's set up, you're gonna go over to the interfaces and go to assignments, and then you're gonna have a, a new available network here. Now I've already configured it, but it's going to show up for you under this dropdown. You're going to grab that and you're going to assign it. Now this, again, this is just like what we've done in other videos. It's really, it's really straightforward. You're going to set that up and hit save. Once that's done, you're going to go to interfaces again. You're going to go to that interface. It's going to be called opt something. You're going to go into it and you're going to enable it, give it a description, give it an IP and a different slash 24 network space, just like we've done in the past. I chose 10.99.1.1 slash 24. That's my network. You're gonna save that. And then we're gonna go again. We're gonna go services. We're gonna go DHCP server. We're gonna choose that new VLAN. We're gonna enable DHCP. We're gonna give it a range within that network. Okay, so for me, I did 10.99.1.100 through 10.99.1.150. Plenty of IPs. Next, we're gonna need to route some traffic. So this is again the part where we're ensuring that the network itself has access to the VPN, but it doesn't have access to anything else. So 
This adds a third advantage. Systems and servers on this VLAN, on that private VPN tunnel, don't have access to anything else in your network unless you explicitly allow it with rules. So it keeps it really, really locked down. That VLAN, for all intents and purposes, is physically wherever your VPN endpoint exits. It doesn't even exist on your network unless you expose it. Back to firewall rules. Go firewall, go to rules, go to the interface that we created earlier. I mean, I call that PIA. And we're gonna go ahead and just make a any, any rule here. Yeah, another one was any, any rules. Hi, networking guys, I know you hate me already. All right, it's fine, it's just fine. All right, so let me edit this rule and just show you what it looks like. This is uh, interfaces PIA, that's, that's that interface I named it. Protocol any, source, destination, any, any. You wanna click on this display advanced options gonna scroll down, this is the key to all of this. You're gonna need to drop this down and select the gateway. You're gonna see a new gateway appear here, and this is gonna line up with what your VPN tunnel is. And then you'll hit save and apply. And with that set up, we're ready to do some testing. So um, I'm not gonna go over this in a ton of detail either because we did do this in another video, so you should be familiar with this already. But you're gonna wanna go in, you're gonna wanna create, and whatever your hypervisor is, if you're using VMware or something else, you're gonna wanna create those networks. You're gonna wanna tag them with VLAN 999 and configure all those things. Again, there's another video that explains all that in excruciating detail, so I'll skip over that and spare you that right now. You're gonna set that to a new VLAN that you created, again, that lines up with that 999 VLAN tag, and you're gonna bind a test virtual machine to that. In my case, that's this PIA VPN. And then we're gonna pop into that VM. I did this as a Windows box just because it's easier to test when I have a browser in front of it, and I didn't feel like spinning up a Linux machine right this moment. So with this, um, I, I just brought up, you know, Bing Maps, okay, whatever. It's gonna try to do geolocation based on my IP address. Okay, it thinks I'm somewhere in Europe. You'll see the same thing when I go to Google, it seems to think that I am not in the United States. It seems to be spitting out some uh, end user agreement things in Swedish. Hmm, interesting. And if I go to a website such as whatsmyip.com or IP Chicken or something of that effect, that is certainly not my ISP provided public IP. That is definitely the public IP exit point on the VPN tunnel that I'm using. And if you geolocate the IP that it spits out, you'll see that that is in fact where you configure your VPN to exit from. So that tells us that everything is working. The DNS lookups are going out correctly. Uh, the IP is geolocating off where we expect it to be. Um, and for all purposes, that entire VLAN exists wherever your VPN exits from. So this is pretty cool, okay? So again, this is a really great way to really just have that peace of mind that you know that your network traffic is going down that VPN tunnel. Nothing's leaking out and coming and exposing your public IP. If you're watching you know, sports that are not allowed in your country or things like that, this will let you do that. Everybody has a right to privacy. This is a good way to ensure that. Okay, well, that's it for today, guys. Pretty simple one. Let me know in the comments what you think of this. If you have some questions, maybe you have a particular VPN provider you're having a little trouble getting set up, I can help you with that. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up subscribe, hit that notification bell so that you know when I launch a video next, and I'll see you in the next one.